So I know it's been three weeks that you met my team. So I think we came back three weeks ago, but uh, fMRI music, giving you lectures on fMRI data analysis. Then last week was pretty exciting. We came with the new uh, neuro TDA, bioinformatics, um, neurodegenerative disease, and topological data analysis, right? Okay, so um, tonight, my, uh, for tonight, we have social psychology. And as you know, um, I'm very much interested towards COVID-19. Um, and I think for years, still, we need to study the impact of COVID-19. Um, I have my dissonance team. I have Myra and here you go. And Vishrut, right? Okay. Hello, hello. Okay, so let me give a little bit of uh, introduction. 704, we have over 100 people now. Um, so, um, I let Myra and uh, Richard talk about the study, uh, but I think if you are, if you're new admits, you, this topic is new to you. However, if you're a returning one, um, you might have been participated in this study during one of the colloquia. So as you know, um, we ran it live. We ran it live a couple of months ago, right Myra? Yeah. Okay, um, so um, the study for data collection is closed. We officially closed it on Sunday. Um, what the team is presenting, what Myra and Richard are presenting on behalf of team is just the um, preliminary data analysis. Um, they had some graph and some more analysis that I asked them to remove and not present it tonight for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, is that we wanted to kind of reserve some of the analysis for the uh, paper that we are writing, um, for the conference that we're going, um, as well as um, we wanted to present the result when we have for all the participants, like we have for, uh, like how many participants, 56, 60? Yeah, okay. Um, so, and another thing is that However, they are going to present the result, the final result, and that's pretty exciting. And I think all of you will like it. Um, so I'm not going to talk any further. Um, leave your questions in the chat box. We have 122, and this is my Ryan Richard. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'll screen share. Ooh, I like the slides. Thank you. Great. Um, okay, guys, just let me know in the chat, please, if my audio is off at all. Um, but I think it should be fine. So um, today we're presenting on investigating the effects of COVID-19 on adolescents' behavioral plasticity. Um, and I'm Myra. And I'm um, Richard. Yeah. So, uh, firstly, um, we'll go into background. So, um, what is cognitive dissonance theory? Just as an introduction for those of you who maybe haven't been to our colloquia before, or didn't, didn't participate in our study. Um, cognitive dissonance theory is a theory stating that when one's attitude conflicts with their behavior, a discomfort arises in the brain. And we call this discomfort cognitive dissonance. So although attitude and behavior may seem like similar terms, they're actually two very different concepts. So attitude is defined as a person's internal morals or values and their preconceived beliefs that a person uses to judge their actions and those within the world around them. Um, behavior, however, is identified as the response to stimuli. De behavior can be directed or guided by attitude, but not always. In a way, you could think of behavior as external and attitude as internal. When there's a discrepancy between someone's behavior and attitude, in other words, between someone's external actions and their internal values or beliefs, in most people, this discrepancy will cause cognitive dissonance. Um, for example, and you can see this in the little picture we have on the side, um, a well-known demonstration of cognitive dissonance theory is known as the carnivore's dilemma. 
So many people enjoy eating meat or other animal byproducts like milk or eggs. Um, however, there's a lot of animal cruelty involved in farming and agriculture industry. So when people learn of this cruelty, they're faced with cognitive dissonance because they like eating meat, it tastes good, and it might be good for you, um, but the means to obtain the meat itself is bad. And most people would agree that they're against the suffering of animals on a moral basis. So knowing that they're contributing to that suffering by eating meat causes cognitive dissonance in most people. Cognitive dissonance has been observed in both humans and animals. In one study, cognitive dissonance was observed in monkeys as well as young children around the age of four. So these results suggested that cognitive dissonance is not societally taught and it's instead an ingrained aspect of the brain or of cognition in general. So as for the history of cognitive dis dissonance theory, scientists Festinger and Carl Smith first demonstrated cognitive dissonance in their 1959 experiment. So the participants, in of which there were seven 71, were made to do a very boring task for an hour. Um, and this task was turning pegs in a round in a pegboard. After this, all participants were told to convince another person in the waiting room to engage in the dull task. However, half the participants re received $20 to do so, and the other half received just $1. So as you can see in the experiment design diagram here, um, the first red box says, I'm not cheap and don't lie easily, which was the initial internal attitude of most of the participants at the beginning of the experiment. Then they had to lie about their opinion of the boring task, incentivized by either $20 or just $1. Those who were paid $1 had higher cognitive dissonance than those who were paid $20. This is because by lying for just $1, the participants did in fact feel quote unquote cheap, co causing high cognitive dissonance with their initial attitude or self-value. Therefore, they felt a higher change in their, in their perception of the task as it changed from boring to fun. This was because they did not want to believe that they were cheap and lying about the boring task. So they instead convinced themselves that the task was indeed fun, so it didn't seem like they were lying. Cognitive dissonance theory has since received a number of important revisions since its conception. A protege of Festinger, Elliot Aronson, provided an important revision to cognitive dissonance theory in 1960. Aronson expanded on the concept of self-justification and why it is so hard for people to admit their wrongs or incorrect beliefs. He proposed that one of the strongest beliefs someone holds is that they are sensible, as are their beliefs. Hence the reason that cult members may try to convert, convert others even after their leaders' predictions have been falsified or their belief system questioned because they don't want to believe that they were wrong initially. In the 1970s, scientists moved away from cognitive dissonance theory because of ethical concerns. Those concerns grew over deception and emotional harms as a result of testing cognitive dissonance. In the 1980s, however, cognitive dissonance began receiving more attention again as it was used for the basis of many, many theories in psychology, including self-verification and self-affirmation theory, which both relate to threats on the sense of self. Self-verification refers to a person's desire to be known to others by their good morals, and self-affirmation refers to a person's own desire to see themselves as morally good. The causes and effects of the perception of these threats on the self were studied in relation to cognitive dissonance in the 1980s through 1990s. Um, as for our study, um, our study was conducted at, on adolescents. So as we, con as we surveyed the literature on cognitive dissonance, we found adolescents were particularly unique when it comes to cognitive dissonance. And this is because adolescents' prefrontal cortex, which is the decision-making part of the brain, um, their prefrontal cortex was not fully developed, meaning that there are many teenagers who do things that they know are wrong, therefore creating a contradiction between their attitudes and behavior. Um, cognitive dissonance. And this can be seen in things like risk-taking or dangerous behavior, which are particularly common are among teenagers, despite their parents or mentors or society giving them a different message to not do those things, which obviously would create a difference between attitude and behavior. And this is expanded in research by Peretti Wattel in Adolescence Cannabis Use and his study on risk denial. So risk denial is the process of identifying and subsequently denying the existence of a dangerous risk in order to reduce cognitive dissonance. So now on an introduction to our study. Um, our study was created on the HIPAA compliant service draw form. The contents of the questionnaire consist of both questions asking for demographic information and the actual study, the actual survey itself. 
So essentially in the survey, participants are asked to rate their agreement with a statement, which may be related to topics such as mask mandates, vaccination requirements, social distancing at school, and various others on a scale of one to 10. One meaning they strongly disagree with the statement and 10 meaning that they strongly agree. Now let's get into the details of the research study. Essentially, our general research question is, how does the COVID-19 pandemic affect the behavioral plasticity of adolescents? The purpose of our study is to collect data on the dissonance adolescents have experienced over the course of the pandemic and to understand the correlation between the effect of the pandemic and dissonant feelings teenagers have experienced. We hypothesize that new and constantly changing legislation concerning vaccines, masks, public safety, and school regulations have led to students experiencing cognitive dissonance. Furthermore, we hope to get 60 participants in our study. Our process of data collection consists of two parts. The first part is consent. Basically, we first send out a long consent form to the student's parents. Once the parents fill it out, they can then complete a short consent form is sent to the students. And once the students fill it out, they can then complete and submit the questionnaire. I wanna make it clear that participant ID identity is completely anonymous and the response is linked to a randomly generated ID and we make sure that data will not be leaked. Now, I know we touched on this previously, but the questionnaire essentially asks adolescents about their opinions on general COVID questions, which is group one, vaccines, group two, masks, group three, the government's response, group four, and schools, group five. Here's a short timeline of a research study. The first step was to read numerous papers and previous literature on COVID-19 and cognitive dissonance. After extensive research, we created questions for a questionnaire and drafted it on JOT form. In order to be able to extract quantifiable data from our survey, we then created our own scoring protocol for measuring participants' dissonance. We then drafted and sent our study proposal to IRB, the Institutional Review Board. And then, as well as we, we then drafted the long consent form for parents and short consent form for students. We are soon to complete the data collection portion of our study and are not accepting further responses as of November 4th. Currently, we're working on data analysis of collected data. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into preliminary data analysis that we conducted. Overall, we had 47 responses to our questionnaire. Please note that these were preliminary results that don't include the most recent data points. We have about 60% of our responses coming from females, 38% coming from males, and 2% coming from people who prefer not to provide the gender. 81% of responses came from people who are fully vaccinated, 17% from those without a booster shot, and 2% from those who only got one vaccine. In terms of race, 94% of her responses have come from Asians. 2% each has come from people of Middle Eastern descent, white people, and people of races that we did not list. Finally, the mean age of participants is 15.81 years old. Here's a summary of the data we collected across all of our categories. 72.34% of people face a significant level of dissonance overall. 63.83% face dissonance in group one, 40.43% face dissonance in group two, 46.81% face dissonance in group three, 82.98% face dissonance in group four, and 72.34% face dissonance in group five. Uh, Richard, can you, uh, sorry, can you emphasize the groups that you have been talking? Um, okay. Sorry. I yeah, group, have a group hard one. Time remembering. <laughs> yes, thank you. Group one is general COVID questions. Group two is vaccines. Group three is masks. Group four is government authority and authority. And group five is schools. All right, now we can go into the analysis we did using R. The correlation matrix helps analyze if there's any correlation between groups, and R values provided for each comparison. In total, there were seven comparisons made. So the highest correlation was found to be between group two and group five, which is just 0 0.42. Therefore, it can be concluded that there's no correlation between scores from two different groups. These plots are correlation plots of a single group score versus the total score of the participant. The total score is the sum of the scores from all the groups. The graph identifies whether there's any correlation between these two variables. 
The data reveals that there is correlation between these two variables, and some groups have higher correlations than others. Groups two and three have the highest correlation with the total dissonance score, while group four is an as high. These correlations can be used to predict the level of dissonance an individual possesses. However, some groups, such as the vaccines group, predicts dissonance levels better than others. The distribution of scores here is based on gender, male, female, and prefer not to say. The scores are equally spread across the total, across the rest of the scores. So it can be concluded that dissonance is not gender specific. Okay, so as for the conclusion and our analysis of our results. So firstly, we did have some challenges with the study and specifically with um, gaining and retaining participants. So our main challenge was in working with minors as participants of the study. So our main challenge in this was developing several consent questionnaires for both parents and children. And we also did have some level of attrition in the study in terms of there were a higher number of parents who completed the, the consent form. Um, and then there was a lower number of kids who completed the consent form. And then there was an even lower number of kids who actually completed the survey. So this was definitely um, a challenge in, in gaining participation for our study. Um, this is related to the second point, which is low participation rate. Um, we did do outreach for our study, um, both within the Jahanikia Neuro Lab, within ASDRP, and just with friends and family. Um, but at the end of the day, it is kind of hard with no incentive um, to incentivize participation in a long survey. Um, and thirdly, this is also related, which is outreach issues. Um, it, we didn't have any budget for marketing or social media promotion, um, so it was really just word of mouth by which we could um, conduct outreach. Um, furthermore, for analysis of our results, firstly, we found no differences in dissonance across gender, and therefore we can derive that there is no difference in cognitive dissonance based on whether or not you're a man or woman. Um, this is important because a lot of the times there are gender biases against women, um, and this data shows that there's actually little difference. It, based on our preliminary data, there's actually little difference um, to show that women may be experiencing more cognitive dissonance than men. Um, Secondly, G2 vaccines and G3 masks had a positive relationship with total average score. And as for possible explanations, this may be because vaccines and masks were more strictly enforced than other measured variables, such as government and authority or regulations um, put in place by schools, because you could kind of choose not to follow regulations by your school, um, whereas a lot of the time it was required for school to receive a vaccine or to receive a booster. Um, additionally, um, it may be because these are more polarizing topics. So a lot of the times there's political discourse around vaccines and masks, and this may cause cognitive dissonance within students who are receiving conflicting streams of information in terms of vaccines and masks from different sources, such as news outlets um, or scientific articles. Um, finally, there are definitely social consequences to our results. So firstly, um, higher dissonance definitely w could indicate higher dissatisfaction um, with certain aspects of how our society dealt with the COVID-19 pandemic. So if adolescents experience higher dissonance between their um, personal opinions or their personal values um, and their behaviors during the pandemic, this could indicate dissatisfaction with how government, school, or parents, um, or other symbols of authority handled the pandemic and regulated the responses. Um, secondly, consistency of in information and education and the theory of trusting the science. So science was definitely challenged a lot during the pandemic. Um, a lot of political news sources um, and governmental figures of authority um, challenged scientific articles, challenged scientific findings. Um, so higher scores of dissonance, specifically in groups such as vaccines and masks, um, show that there was definitely conflicting information that could have led to um, students and adolescents having conflicting beliefs versus attitude beliefs versus behavior sorry um in relation to these topics specifically thank you everyone um a special thank you to um sahar john nikki our advisor um the rest of the dissonance team and the olive children's foundation and asdrp for supporting our research and we are now ready for any questions thank you um, how many targets did you have in the uh study at the end 
Um, our data analysis was of, I think, 47 participants, but we are still collecting data through the end of this week. Okay. So I think how many do you have for now? 50? We have 55 52. now, I think. 52, 55? Yeah. The number matters. So is it 52? Uh, 53. 53. We have 53. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Dr. McMahon. Hi, okay. Sahar, how are you? Good, 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 good. Um, okay, so uh, here's the thing. Um, team, we ran ANOVA, right? But I'm sure that we did not include it yet. Uh, in, okay, okay. Uh, just to make sure that all those correlations are not reliable as well as, you know, until you are not, um, you know, um, running the hypothesis in t-test. Uh, which in this case, because there are subcategories, you have to run ANOVA for that. So uh, it still needs statistical analysis. So uh, they came back to give some update of how their study is. Uh, well done. Um, so I hope it was not as intense of last two colloquia about TDA and you know, a lot of data science. So I think it was fun. Um, um, so let's put a question in a chat box that, what are the dissonance after you got a concept of dissonance? I would, I would rather go with the behavioral plasticity because I kind of like the word behavioral plasticity much more than dissonance. Um, what are the daily dissonance, um, which basically is a contradiction between your behavior versus your attitude you're facing? Put it in the chat. I mean, um, let's help them, uh, Myra, Richard. Um, like one of the example was, um, would <laughs> procrastination count? Does it? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I do. I personally do not like to procrastinate, but I also enjoy doing the procrastination when I have a to-do list to do. Yes, that is a good one. Um, another one is smoking. So many people they don't want to smoke because they know it's. Um, it's not good for health, but still, they're smoking. Okay, next, next. Binge watching Netflix? Cheating. Hold on, what? How, how soon run? How cheating? Eating good food, fast food. Okay. So um, you want to cheat, but you like to cheat? Mm, that's I mean, I guess my cheat is that, like some people like feel like they shouldn't cheat. But they, I don't know, maybe they want to like get a good test course and do it oh, anyway. Okay. Ooh, spending money. This is a good one. <laughs> Online shopping. Oh my God. Fast fashion. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. That's good. A lot of creative idea. Wasting time you should be doing something useful with. Hmm. I do not think. Is that a dissonance? Chin Mei, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Can you explain it in much more details? Yeah, so it's something like, not specifically wasting time, but like, let's say, um, let's say you're, you're like, you should be doing some work, but then like, you get distracted doing something else, right? Okay. okay. That's something that you'd like to do, something like, I don't know, like, let's say you, you should be doing work, but you're caught up in like a show or something. Okay, I think I like Harika's too. Uh, using a gas car when you want to come and climate change. <laughs> okay, uh, impulse buying, okay. Okay, okay, a little bit of crime over here using plastic water bottle. But you still want the water, okay. Wow, wow, okay. Come on, come on. That's getting pretty exciting, right? <laughs> It's like a lot of research idea popping to my head that, okay, uh, what we can get from this. So yes, yes, procrastinating is definitely, yes. Um, when I look at it, it's definitely um, a concept of um, dissonance. But yeah, I mean, um, yes, we all want to help with the climate change, but, um, you know, we still drive. Uh, vehicle with gas, but not soon, right? I mean, I mean, sometimes uh, soon in California, we're going to uh, move to electric. So new messages, negative addictions in general. I would say any addiction 
um, till a person has that sort of acceptancy that you know they are it's not good but they are kind of falling for it okay that was pretty exciting no judgment a lot of us are doing that and um buying more books before finishing <laughs> wow it looks like i face a lot of designs <laughs> it's like yes um i don't think so that's a bad thing hello excuse me um buying more books is just a vibe gives you a good feeling so um i don't know i am i'm not going to support that thought but maybe maybe okay one into eight healthy but yeah i mean that's true you know you need to drink a lot of water but still like you know you get too busy um true going out with friends when you're sick okay that's a that's a morality aiden okay um aiden you're in my team right <laughs> we have to spend some time uh getting to oh okay no my brother was okay <laughs> Okay, okay, no judgmental thing over here. Okay. Uh, one thing, hold on, telling someone who enjoys sunbathing that excessive sun is. Yes, that's true. That's true. Um, I mean, a lot of people like to get, um, you know, tan during summer, but yeah, at the same time, the exposure to sun is really serious. Uh, wanting to get fit, but keep skipping exercise. Dr. Mike Mahan, yes, Maybe I can get you on board. <laughs> for a trail run, um, but forgetting to keep my camera on. Okay, wanting to get more sleep, but still sleeping late. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I will remind Arafat in the next meeting to put her camera on, so. Um, that's brilliant. I, I hope you guys enjoy um, and get familiar with the concept of resonance. Um, now, here's the question. Okay, so all this fun apart, this is called behavioral plasticity, right? Um, how we can reduce the degree of dissonance? Now we know that, okay, we're all kind of battling between justification, okay? Answers, answers. How we can reduce the dissonance? Changing attitude. Well, that's a problem with the dissonance, right? <laughs> we see the plasticity between that. Uh, be forced to not procrastinate to see its benefit. Okay. Come on. That's a good one. Yes. Yes. That's the exact answer, actually. Or I would say the psychological uh, solution to the dissonance is a negative uh, and positive reinforcement. Yes. But how? It's very simple. Write it down. Can be, yeah. It's actually, um, the neuroimaging studies show that, um, specifically, I think the EG study, um, that um, it kind of changed the functional um, connectivity of the brain when the concept of dissonance is engaged. Uh, setting goals or making a list or reminders. Correct, so you want to write um, what you are thinking versus how where you are behaving, right? Um, and then setting up a kind of channel to um, mitigate um, a connection to reduce 
uh, the amplitude of it. So let me explain, like, you know, um, I like to drive a gas car, but I'm a very climate concerned person. So how I can do that by putting, setting a goal that, okay, up to maybe 2025, I will drive gas cars. And after that, no matter what happened, I'm going to change um, to an electric car, despite like my, okay. Uh, so it's kind of, in, you know, bringing the thoughts yeah, yeah. on a paper. Yes. Dr. Mike Mohan, I'm all yours. What? What did you say? Okay. Perhaps. Am I, um, am I unmute? That was missed. Never mind. It's okay. Uh, so yeah. Um, so I think that's one way of reducing dissonance, but again, I'm not an expert. Everyone knows their, um, or, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, they know how they're going to manage their own behavior. Uh, but I hope this study and the concept of dissonance and behavioral plasticity got you to thinking about what's going on around you. That's the whole purpose of science, I guess, to bring awareness. We love science, right? So thank you, team. Thank you, dissonance team. Behind this team, there is a behind, um, I would say, Myra and Vishra, there's a big team of individuals working hard on this study. So thank you, team. And I think... Um, I will not, my team will, my lab will not be presenting anything next week. So <laughs> it's not going to be consequence of three weeks of seeing me in my lab. Uh, but so have fun. I think um, Dr. McMahon will come with his lab to present the work. Uh, but I hope you all enjoyed tonight's presentation. Thank you. And that was great. Over 150 people. That was nice. Cool. Thank you, team. Bye 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 b